In Star Trek, phasers are an extremely common energy weapon, found on virtually all Federation starships and a number of alien ones as well. As an audience, we've become used to their ubiquitous presence on the show. See, we all know that in the original series, phasers were blue, and then by the films, phasers were red, and by the next generation, phasers were an orangish color, which stuck through the rest of the show, and no doubt influenced the color of Enterprise's phase cannons, which have a similar, if not slight, Slightly redder hue. Red and orange are pretty similar, but blue is a pretty big outlier, which suggests that the technology is different during the time period of the original series. Maybe they got blue phasers from the Andorians during this time. But you see, the phasers in the original series aren't blue, at least not exclusively by a long shot, and that is not in the remastered versions, which retconned all the phasers in the show to be blue for some reason. And it's interesting how fast rewriting history can play with our minds and make us forget that in the original show, the phasers were a multitude of colors, the most common being red and blue, but we also see pink, orange, and even green. Now with the shipboard phasers, there's not much of a discernible pattern to colors, but with hand phasers, there kind of is sometimes. And it's important to recognize that the remastered versions don't seem to tamper with the color of hand phasers. We still see plenty of reds in that category. In both Operation Annihilate and Return of the Archons, stun settings appear blue, while kill settings appear red. But other times, this pattern doesn't exist. In the Omega Glory, a blue beam can vaporize a human, and in Spock's brain and a piece of the action, the stun settings appear green. So it seems like there isn't much of a correlation between those classic iconic settings and beam color. Now, blue and red beams appear at a pretty similar rate through the show, and as we discussed, not usually in a particularly discernible pattern. So if we take the original visual effects to be canon, it's somewhat confusing. But the next generation already gave us an answer to variable beam colors. We see this on display in Best of Both Worlds, where the Enterprise fires on a Borg cube with rotating phaser frequencies. And we see multiple colors firing from the same phaser bank. I would assume that all of these beams are equally powerful despite being different colors, and that makes me pretty comfortable in saying that the blue and red beams in the original series could be equally lethal or equally non-lethal. Different colors of phaser beams simply suggest different conditions or maybe different target shield frequencies, or Starfleet has simply found a frequency that works in a majority of scenarios, meaning we don't see the variety of colors from the past. But the whole system of eras and corresponding phaser colors simply doesn't hold up. Red phasers were not introduced in Wrath of Khan. Orange phasers weren't introduced in the next generation. Honestly, pretty much every basic convention of phasers was already established in the original series. Pulse phasers? We got them in Season 1. Wide beam settings? That was also Season 1. We've just forgotten that the original series pretty much had it all, and its multicolored phasers aren't as much of an anomaly as once thought. I think, in general, the original series doesn't really get the respect that it deserves. It's usually seen retroactively as an outlier to the more standardized world of the next generation, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise. But the original series started it all, and most of the things that we love about Star Trek started there. If you want to see more of my love for the original series, I have a few other videos on the topic, such as the view screen technology in the show and the design of the original Enterprise, so feel free to check those videos out. To the rest of you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.